Grant County on 1400 WBAT. Later today, the Gary Snyder Show will be back at it, and Gary will talk about all kinds of things, including all the uh, fun in, on Wall Street with the uh, S&P dropping, what was it, 500 points or something or other. What fun. Anyway, uh, also, uh, they'll be talking a little bit about the weekend in NASCAR. Uh, Radiospeedtalk.com's Pete LaFuchia will be uh, joining Gary, as he does quite frequently on Mondays. Abby Phillips also on the guest list from Politico.com with the latest from the White House. And, of course, Gary has some other neat stuff going on, including some ticket giveaways and possibly some cash giveaway over the next couple of days, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Also coming up on our program today, uh, Marion Fire Chief Steve Gorell will swing by at 835 this morning. John Claiborne, president of the Marion Teachers Association, will be here at 735. And right now with us is Grant County historian Bill Munn with Moments in Grant County History. Good morning, Bill. Good morning on a, on a really uh, uh, nice morning. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, this is great. This is great. Yeah, this it really is. is. Uh, you know, it was not having uh, water dripping off of everything. <laughs> Although, on the way here, I saw some trees uh, knocked over on Spencer Avenue. Oh, really? Yeah, from some the storm large yesterday. Trees. Yeah. yeah. I understand some uh, some people were without electricity for a while. Yeah, I believe that's right. Somebody in Swayze, who's a train weather spotter, I think recorded a wind gust of 66 Ooh. miles an hour or something. It's yeah, we were coming stuff. back from um, Lafayette yesterday, and, and around 13, uh, you could see where the wind had just went through the cornfields and just kind oh of my gosh. blew them over there. And we saw a couple of trees that were down. So there was more damage than even I thought. I didn't realize that. Well, if you will recall, this is a part two. This is the rest of the story. <laughs> part one last week uh, dealt with um, uh, Marion's wild and woolly days in, in, in 1901 and a, spe- a sermon that was given by H.H. Uh, Rus- Russell, who was superintendent of the National Anti-Saloon League at Temple Christian Church, in which he outlined the, the problems that the city had with alcohol. And uh, in the course of his sermon, he mentioned um, a national crusader against, against the drink by the name of Kerry Nation. Now, Kerry Nation uh, of Medicine Lodge, Kansas, who was the inspiration for this sermon, was a lifelong foe uh, of, and, and a zealous, of alcohol and a zealous member of the w- Women's Christian Temperance Union. And, um, in 1900, she had some uh, uh, preliminary skirmishes with taverns in, uh, in her hometown in Kansas, and, and she decided to embark on physical attacks on the hated saloon. <laughs> and umbrella and later axe in hand, uh, Carrie Nation uh, would pulverize the premises where drink was sold and chase the customers out into the streets. Now, the, the solid citizens of Marion, you know, however receptive they were to Russell's message, must have been a bit apprehensive about the speaker's heroine. Now, now Russell was careful to point out that uh, Mrs. Nation would not engage in any smashing here. You know, that, that was a pretty dubious <laughs> claim in that at the time he was talking, she was exactly in the process of smashing saloons. Um, now, Russell told his listeners... Uh, that he had visited Mrs. Nation at the Topeka jail seven weeks before and found her to be motherly, good-natured, bright, smart, and witty. And uh, he said the picture of Mrs. Nation in the uh, secular press are not true. And um, I, there's a classic image of, of Carrie that was uh, printed nationwide of her, this very sweet-looking older lady uh, in, in a bonnet and, uh, and frilly dress. But in her hand, she has an axe. So I, I, you know, I think she presented sort of a formidable uh, uh, picture there. But the same week, in April 1901, saw the visit of a nation to Marion although it would not be the axe willed and carry, but her husband David. Uh, David Nation had returned to the state in order to visit his brother James, who had remained at the longtime family home in Sycamore, Indiana, near Kokomo. The Kokomo Daily Dispatch reported that Nation was weary of the turmoil he'd been compelled to endure, speaking about Carrie, and is credited with saying that he would not pass through his experience for a thousand dollars a day. Now, if David was looking for some relief on his on a visit home, that, that just wasn't to be. 
Um, the Nation family, by the way, uh, and there are many nations around in Grant County, and, and they are related. The Nation family had settled first in Henry County, uh, where David was born in 1828, one of nine children. And the Nations, like many uh, settlers to, uh, to the area, uh, were from North Carolina by way of Kentucky. Uh, David's father, uh, is recorded, had served in the War of 1812, and uh, his, uh, his grandfather, I mean, and his grandfather was, uh, had been with uh, Mad Anthony Wayne in the Indian Wars uh, around Fort Wayne. And uh, prior to the Civil War, David had become a lawyer in Delaware and Howard County and served a term as prosecuting attorney uh, for Howard County in 1858. And uh, they had, uh, David and his brothers were active in the Civil War. They'd been in the 69th Indiana Volunteer Infantry. And after the war, David moved to Holden, Missouri and became a newspaper editor and sometime minister in the, uh, in the Christian church. Uh, while in, he was married uh, while he was in Missouri and the woman died in 1874, in December of the same year, the widower nation would marry a widow 19 years younger than himself by the name of Carrie Amelia Gloyd. Now, the, the, the marriage of David and Carrie, as you might imagine, was a difficult union. Uh, David uh, uh, traveled around the West trying to uh, strike it rich. He, he uh, ran a hotel in, in Texas and a newspaper. He then moved his family to Medicine Lodge, Kansas, where he took up the ministry of the local Christian church. And it's during this time that Carey became more militantly anti-drink. And uh, uh, the accounts I found was that uh, David was a more reticent person. This was not his, this was not <laughs> his stuff. So. Well, well, I'm sure he was opposed to drink, uh, uh, as many pastors were at the time. I don't think the going in the taverns and smashing the place up was part of his... Uh, part of his uh, bag of tricks there. Um, but but as, as Carrie became uh, more and more involved, uh, she became a national personality and a great demand in temperance circles as a speaker. Um, a little more than three weeks before Russell's sermon, Carrie Nation had come to Indiana. Uh, the Kokomo Dispatch of April 3rd reported that this Kansas saloon smasher had stopped for a few hours in Kokomo on the way to visit her brother-in-law, Captain James R. Nation of Sycamore. Now, Nation demanded that she be taken to a hotel where there was no bar and no shameful pictures, as she saw at the Denizen Hotel in Indianapolis yesterday. Uh, Nation observed that there were women in big paintings without clothes enough on their backs, if one could see their backs, to dust a fiddle. It's bad enough to own and control a hell of liquid fire, she said, but these paintings are even worse than the bottled damnation they handed over the bar. Uh, <laughs> so they had to move her. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, now this is uh, kind of fascinating. It, apparently, uh, the, the residents of Kokomo celebrated Carrie's arrival uh, with an elaborate prank in which they announced that she would speak from the balcony of City Hall. And it panicked the tavern owners, so they posted guards at the doors of their establishments. And appeals were made uh, for police protection. And at the appointed hour, the doors of the municipal building's balcony swung open, and a banner was unfurled to the waiting crowd that had announced, this is the first day of April, April Fool's Day. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Kokomo was spared the axe. Well, uh, that later the same month, David came to Marion, not to smash saloons, but to visit, visit his sister, Cecilian Mills. Um, this was not to be a pleasant family reunion. According to the Marion Weekly Reader, David was robbed while standing in line for his ticket to the Sipes Dog and Pony Show. So help me, it's true. It was a dog and pony show. Wow. Nation, who was described as a, a, a gentleman of 230 pounds, was unable to turn around fast enough to pre prevent, prevent the thief from picking his pocket. The robber managed to make off with $73 in cash and a pair of silver cuffling buttons belonging to his grandfather. In perhaps an unintended irony, Nation observed that he had practiced law in Marion many years before, and he was surprised. And he was surprised in the change of the city from a hamlet to a to the thriving manufacturing center which it had become. 
The same day as David Nation reported his theft, the Chronicle ran an article titled, Kerry Nation is Insane. According to the report from Wichita, Kansas, Mrs. Nation was confined to jail at the time, was overcome with a fit of ins insanity, ostensibly brought on by the death of her brother. Nation allegedly, allegedly slapped her cellmate, a Mrs. Wilhoyt, who had been one of her associates. Mrs. Nation accused her of being a spy for the saloon man. And Carrie was then con put in solitary confinement. Uh, the Chronicle mentions that her husband David, who was still in Marion, was informed of his wife con wife's condition. The Anderson Bulletin is quoted in the Marion Leader as saying, with Carrie Nation insane in Kansas and her husband loose and unprotected in Marion, <laughs> the world affor is afforded an example of the old adage that misfortunes never become singly. Da David Nation's misfortunes were not over, however. The Kokomo, Kokomo Papers painted a different picture of David's robbery. The Daily Dispatch read an article, David Nation experiences a tender touch, wanders from the Sipe show to, Marion, to a Marion saloon where he is relieved of his cash, watch, and transportation. <laughs> of course, they're, they're saying that poor David was rolled in a tavern. Citing telegraphic reports from Marion, the dispatch maintained that a check with the management of the dog and pony show revealed that no robbery had been reported and that the crime had taken, a, had taken place in a South Marion saloon. The Kokomo Daily Tribune also repeated the saloon story with the added note that the friends and family nations are, wandering, are wondering what the smasher will do when she hears of what happened. She is likely to give Marion a glimpse of Hades with the lid off. No mention of a saloon appeared in the Marion press. <laughs> now, Carrie did not come to Marion. Uh, we don't know that she was ever aware of the robbery accusation. Um, after a stay in Sycamore and a visit with relatives in Ohio, uh, Nation returned to Medicine Lodge and filed for divorce from his wife in the fall of the same year. In her modestly titled autobiography, The Use and Need of the Life of Carrie A. Nation, written by herself, Mrs. Nation claims complete astonishment at the charge of extreme cruelty and de desertion David had lodged against her. Uh, he had sued for all the property and expense of the trial. She felt that her husband was induced to do this by the Republicans, thinking to hinder my work as a prohibitionist. David did receive his divorce. Uh, according to Carrie's account, the divorce was granted not on the charges filed, but on her testimony that she could not, nor ever would, live with him as a wife. Mrs. Nation was awarded the property from the marriage which she used to fund a home for drunkard wa drunkards' wives in Kansas City. In her chapter on the trial, Carrie speaks to the reproach of being a divorced woman, but does not express any sense of longing for the departed David. Carrie's now ex-husband died in obscurity in Medicine Lodge, Kansas in 1903. My. What a story. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. It is amazing. It's, it Marion is at the center of the world, wow. let me tell you. Kleins, did you, do you have any contact with any of the Nation family? Do you know any of the... Them or not? Soon Nation? Yes. Taught? Yes. Yes. Okay. I taught with Susan Nation. Uh, yeah. uh, a few weeks ago, I think in the Marion paper, somebody had mentioned uh, a, a Nation relative had. had, had